Bear here, aka Peter Freak Out 10, bringing another episode of the Mother Review Show with the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review. And I'm continuing my summer movie reviews, baby. Hell yes. Alright. Now, on today's episode, I'm continuing from where my last review left off. And for those who have been keeping up with my channel, let me explain what I'm doing. For those who don't know, last time I did a review of one of the most influential films in the sci-fi genre and action genre. It's a film that has been quoted. It was a breakout role for many people, including the director. And everybody remembers this film. Everybody talks about it. And no one has forgotten it. That's how much of a big influence it was for the genres. And what film is that, you may ask? That film is none other than The Terminator, baby. I already talked so much about this film in my last video, so I won't go on it too long. But for those who haven't seen the video, let me explain. The Terminator was a film made back in 1984 that was directed by James Cameron. And this was his breakout directorial film because around the time he was doing stuff like Roger Corman films and... When he came around to this, um, he got the idea for this film from Piranha 2 The Spawning after he was fired. And he was given a small budget. And though it was not destined to be a hit because James Cameron didn't see it like that, the film was a big hit. And it's one of the few films I could think of that actually has 100% on Ron Tomato. So it did well. And so many people remember it. So many people quote it. It was a big breakout role for Arnold Schwarzenegger, who around this time hadn't been doing much, but when he did The Terminator, that's the film that rose him to stardom. And think about it, without without this film, we, we wouldn't be seeing him in films like um, Conan, Commando, Lax Action Hero, or um, Total Recall, or even... Um, to not Total Recall, or even Jingle All the Way. <laughs> That's how much of an influence he was. Everybody remembers this film for Arnold, and whenever anybody sees him on screen, they'll always say, The Terminator! That's how much of an influence he was for the film, and that's how much he pushed the film to where it is. That's how great of a role it was for him. And the other actors are good too. Linda Hamilton, Michael Bean, they all give fantastic performances, great effects. And it's just all around a dang good film. And even with some horror elements incorporated into it, it still works. So, yeah. Naturally, the film was a big hit, so it was inevitable that it get a sequel. And James Cameron came back to write and direct the sequel. And this is the final time we're going to see James Cameron uh, direct the Terminator film or write it. And pretty much... But he also had some help with him, uh, William Wisher, who I don't know anything about. But this film went through production hell, and everybody was worried that it may not be as good as the first. Everybody was questioning about how this movie may not top the first, because the first one was so big back in 1984. And usually with films that go through production hell, not, it isn't really, what's, it isn't really um, good what's on the screen, so to speak. I mean, look what happened with Alien 3, even though I like Alien 3, I can definitely understand why people don't like it, and that film has its problems, the effects don't really look the best, but I can understand why people hate that film, but this film went through production hell due to it being shopped around, uh, they had limited technology and had to wait on it, and pretty much... Nobody thought the film would be made, and even if it did get made, nobody would think that it'd be as good as the first. But in 1991, James Cameron did the impossible with Terminator 2 Judgment Day. He gave a sequel that, that pretty much took its predecessor, pulled its head off, and smashed it on the ground. It achieved the impossible. It gave, he gave us a sequel that was worthy. And that was a task to do because... The only time that has happened was in 1987 when he gave us Aliens. And 
to this day, everybody considers this to be one of the greatest sequels of all time, in the same vein that everybody considers Aliens to be one of the greatest sequels of all time. Now, listening to all that, listening to how much praise this film gets, what do I think of it? It's a dang good sequel, and I agree with that. Now, to say it's better than the first, I can't say that, because the first, the first one has so much going for it that I like, and I really like what it was going for, I like the tone of it, and... All of what was present in that film is shoved to the side for more of like, well, I wouldn't say goofy, while it's definitely serious, it's more like, um, more like an E.T. kind of vibe to it that this film kind of goes for, for, but it still try, it still keeps the hard edge, whereas, um, the other one was more of a hard R horror action movie. But I still think that the film has so much going for it, and I do like it in its own way, even though I do like the first one a lot as well. But I still think it's a dang good sequel, and I do think it has a lot going for it, which I'll explain later. And I'm not going to hate on it and be, um, be, one of the, be one of those guys that is the sore thumb, because... You can't deny there's so much to this film. That You can't deny that there's a lot to it that James Cameron incorporated. But I'll get into that later. But anyway, as I said, it was made in 1991. This was directed by James Cameron, who um, also produced the film. He helped write it. And a lot of the actors from the first one come back, actors and actresses. Um, Linda Hamilton comes back. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes back, who um, has now made a name for himself, and he has now returned to the part that got him where he uh, started to become that star he is. Um, he had the breakout role of Edward Furlong, who would later go on to be in Brain Scan. He was in Pet Cemetery 2. Um, um, he, I know he was in one film. I forget the name of it. Um, he was in American History X, Detroit Rock City. Those are the films he would later go on to do. And I like Edward Furlong. I think he's a good actor. Um, a few actors from the first... A few of the side actors from the first comeback, like uh, the, the psychiatrist played by um, Earl Bowen. Um, he comes back as the psychiatrist that was... That was being a jerk to Kyle from in the first film, um, but you also get some other actors as well. You have uh, Robert Patrick in this film, who um, would later go on to be in From Dust Till Dawn Two, Texas Blood Money. Um, he before this he was in uh, Die Hard Two. Um, his character would also go on to make a quick appearance in Wayne's World as a joke to that. He was in Double Dragon. Again, like anybody would want to be remembered for that film. Um, film. Um, uh, he was in Hong Kong 97, no, not the video game, um, um, he was in, he was also in the attraction for this movie at Universal Studios, um, and he was in The Faculty, I forgot about that, he was the coach, I gotta re-review that film, because I'm not proud of the review I did, but, um, and he was also on the X-Files and Spy Kids, so he's a good actor. He's definitely a good actor, um, but this is the role that everybody remembers him for. You even have the two twins from uh, Gremlins 1 and 2, the, Gremlins 2, I should say, the psychiatrist, well, not the psychiatrist, the two doctors who were friends of Christopher Lee. Um, but yeah, I do think this is a great sequel. I do think it's a really well-made sequel, and... Definitely has a lot going for it, but I'll get into why later, but anyway. The basic plot of the film is basically this. Um, in order to explain the plot a little bit, I do have to explain the first one, spoil a little bit, but the first one came out a long time ago, so yeah. But um, for those who don't remember, in the first one, uh, um, Kyle and Sarah blew up the Terminator in the factory, but it kept coming for Sarah, and she managed to crush it. And 
before that, um, before that whole thing happened, uh, we learned that Sarah and Kyle had sex in the hotel, and we learned that Kyle is the father of um, John. And basically, since then, um, Sarah has been training John, building him up to be what he will be in the future. And basically, um, and basically, um, she manages to get herself captured and sent to an insane asylum after she attempts to blow up the computer factory. And so, pretty much, in the future, we learn that, uh, pretty much, Skynet is planning, like, this this whole thing that's going to lead to the end of the world, or this um, device, I should say, that's going to lead to the end of the world. And basically, um, in order to prevent that from happening, they decide to go the extra mile, more so than they did with the first film, where instead of killing the mother, now they're going to go after John himself. So they send um, the T-1000, played by Robert Patrick, to kill a young John Connor, played by Edward Furlong. And basically... Um, Basically, after all that, um, we learned that John built a T-1000, not a T-1000, I forget the name of it, uh, T-8000, model 101, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the same model that was trying to kill Sarah, who already says played by Linda Hamilton, the first one, don't need to say it again, but um, he comes down, saves him from a mall, and so now they manage to break Sarah out of the facility, and now pretty much, um, they're now pretty much on the run from the T-1000 and, um, the, and the police in general who are out to basically kill them and get Sarah back. Um, along the way, uh, pretty much, John starts to form a relationship with the Terminator and starts teaching it to be more human and whatnot. And pretty much that's where the film kicks off because now they're on this one big race to basically just save the future and basically prevent Judgment Day from happening. Will they be able to prevent Judgment Day or will that huge explosion that everybody remembers dominate the world and kill everybody and turn them into ashes? Now, The Terminator 2 is a tough film to talk about. I have to say, this is more tougher to talk about than it was with the first one, because so much has already been said about this one, probably more so, so much has been more said about this one than the first one, even because I, with the first one, so much, so many people talked about it, but at least I found some stuff to, uh, a lot of people I haven't talked about, but, even though I met just some people, but I managed to find stuff that I enjoyed and actually make what I like about it, but... With this one, so much has already been talked about. So much has already been said. So I'm going to do the best I can. And if I screw up, I screw up. But still, I'm going to try and find some new things that I like. But Terminator 2, I think, is a great sequel. Um, as I said, it has a different tone from the first. And I respect the film for that because it separates itself from the first and really more moves itself more towards an R-rated kind of E.T. Because what do I mean by that? It's the fact that in the film, um, John starts to form a little bit of a relationship with the Terminator. It kind of comes off as a little bit of an, itch my nose a bit, of an E.T. vibe. And I do appreciate the film for that. I really think it works with the film. I like the sweetness between the two. Um, like John trying to teach it to be more human and whatnot. And even the scenes where he's sharing like what his dad about how he would love to see Kyle, his dad. Which, that's something I gotta talk about later. But um, I do like the scenes with that. I do like the scenes with the two. I thought they were really, really well done. And I do like the the aspect of him te trying to teach him how to be human, all the while um, he's still a robot and doesn't feel anything. And I like that aspect. I like that sweet kind of tender aspect that the film gives, and I think it works with the film really, really well. Well, and definitely kind of definitely shows um, what they shows the character growing and whatnot and definitely kind of gives the idea as horror fan 34 stated um that um 
what does it mean to be human? That's the whole thing about this film. So, yeah. But when it does get to the action moments, it definitely gets the action moments get rolling. They're fast-paced. And I kind of like the idea of it. I like the scenes where... Um, like that one car chase off the bridge and whatnot on the motorcycle. The action scenes do get rolling. And they're really well done. I like some of the... I like the effects in the scenes, which we will get to. And I do love that one explosion scene, which gives a good message. And it's one of the most memorable parts of the movie. Everybody who talks about this film always remembers that part. Because it's the most heart-wrenching scene out of any film ever made. So, yeah. But... The acting in the film is also really well done. Linda Hamilton comes back, and I think she does a great job as this character. Um, you can tell she's transitioned from the character that she was in the first movie into the character that she is here. And I like the sort of toughness that they added to her, and I like the sort of, like, her trying to be um, the hero for John Connor because he's never had a father, and it shows that... That she's trying to maintain both roles while also be a mother. And I thought that was really well done of her. Um, I thought the moments where you do see her fighting, I thought that was all really well done. Um, I don't know if she, she did her stunts or whatnot, but either way, Linda Hamilton did a great job. Um, I mean, even what she um, had to go through, she had to lose weight and um, she... Um, and she even took military training. Wow. So, she definitely did a good job. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes back, and he's not the bad guy that he was in the first film. Film, And I thought he did a really good job here as the good guy. Um, it's definitely different seeing him more as the good guy than he was in the first film. But, definitely thought he did a good job. Um, um, I like this, I do like the kind of friction that, they put between Sarah and um, and him, and basically they they set up the fact that yeah um, yeah she doesn't trust him after what she he did to Kyle and what he attempted to do to her. But all that I do appreciate for the film. I do like the fact that she hasn't forgotten about Kyle and that she still stands behind um, that she hates what's going on. She stands behind. She hates the model. And I thought it was done well. I thought it was done well for with her. Um, Robert Patrick, I thought, was phenomenal. While he's not as scary as Arnold, because he definitely is more human-like as the character, um, he's more like... Because whereas Arnold, there was more like... Um, he felt more emotionless and more like... He, like, say, like, when he goes and kills someone, he just, he doesn't have a face to give. He, he doesn't, like, give emotion. He doesn't spout one-liners, even though the F you kind of thing. Here, he, he feels more human-like, and he um, has this new ability, but I still liked him. I thought he did a good job. I thought he, while he doesn't have the creepy moments Arnold has, he still does a good job. And... There were some scenes with this character, one scene with this character that they cut out, which I'm actually kind of glad they did, even though this scene would have added to him more. Um, but I do admit this would have helped him more, give him more of like the Arnold kind of vibe to him. Like there's a scene in where you guys know the scene where he kills the foster parents. Well, afterwards he goes and kills the dog and you see him with the bloody collar. And while I can understand that because I love dogs, uh, that why they cut it out, I still think it would have helped his character more. And, and you'll see stuff like that cut out in the film. Like even, like for example, one scene like you have uh, Sarah's character, um, she sees um, Kyle and like she's telling him come back because she's having a dream and you see that explosion. Um, why didn't they keep that in the film? I would have loved to see that, too. So, yeah, but, um, that's one complaint I have about the film. Other than that, the film is definitely, has a great cast, good acting. 
good good special effects, great CGI from Industrial Light and Magic um, because you'll see a lot of it because the new Terminator himself is liquid metal and is able to turn into anything. And the CGI on him is phenomenal. Great uses of practicality and CGI and it still holds up. It still holds up. And this proves that um, with CGI, you can use practicality in CGI. You don't have to just CGI over it. And I still think it looks great. And there are a lot of films from the 90s that I think hold up. Jurassic Park, Godzilla, um, a little bit of Spawn, which I know those hell effects don't look the best, but... Uh, um, other effects that I feel hold up in the 90s... Um, like Wishmaster and whatnot, because that uses CGI and practicality. Even Jurassic Park, if I already mentioned that, sorry. Um, but so many films with CGI in the 90s still hold up. Granted, because they use both practicality and CGI. And this is a, an example of how well it could be incorporated. But, yeah. Um, and there's some good action scenes, as I said. I keep saying that. Because the whole film is action. And it's definitely really well done. Um... So yeah, I think this is a dang good sequel. I mean, it's really tough to talk about seeing as how I love the first film and it, as easy as that was to talk about, this one is definitely really more hard to talk about because of the fact that so many people have said what has to be said, but I still really enjoy it. I mean, the only complaint that I can make as I made with the first one was I really wish that they didn't cut out those scenes, but overall, Terminator 2 is a phenomenal sequel, and it's definitely easy to see why so many people like this film. And if you like the first film, you're definitely going to like the second one. While you may not find the horror vibe that you looked for in the first film, film, I guarantee you're still going to have a great time. So either way, highly recommend you check out Terminator 2. Phenomenal sequel. So either way, I give Terminator 2 Judgment Day a 9.5 out of 10, and it deserves it. Therefore, it gets my seal of approval. It's a phenomenal sequel, and it stands on its own really well, as opposed to the first one. Even though I love the first one, it definitely stands on its own, and it does a great job doing that. So... Definitely check out Terminator 2. It's a great movie. But that's my review for the Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And next time, I'm going to do a review of National Lampoon's Animal House since I'm graduating from high school. Figured I'd do a review of this and tell you guys what I think of it. And figure it'd be a good way to celebrate. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I know what a lot of people are going to say that this film is awesome, but... Still be nice to hear um, what you guys think of it. And I'll see you guys later. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.